definitely not uh, what I expected to see uh, from our team. And so, you know, as the head coach of a team that didn't play well, I didn't coach well enough, obviously. Uh, we had a really good week of practice, but uh, we needed to play complimentary football in this football game, which means we possess the ball, we score points. Um, I thought our opening drive was great, seven-minute drive, eight-minute drive, whatever it was, and, and we didn't get points. And then you turn the football over, um, which we did three times, and one of them was a touchdown. Um, you don't rush the football well. You, know, you don't control the line of scrimmage. You don't stop people on third and long. It's hard to win, uh, bottom line. And so, you know, give credit to Tennessee. They played a good football game. Uh, they were very physical. Um, but we weren't good enough tonight. So, questions? Raise your hand. Let's not hear who you're with. Who has the first question? Jane. Uh, Jane Watson Fisher, Raleigh News and Observer. Uh, Dave, it kind of feels like deja vu from last year, where it's like you scrape out the week one win, you get your tails whooped in week two. You know, how do you kind of, you know, not get stuck in feeling like, oh my God, are we going to, you know, struggle like we did last year? Yeah, I mean, last season has nothing to do with this season. It's a different football team, and uh, we just weren't good enough tonight. Bottom line, you know, we had our chances in that football game, um, but it got away from us, you know. And in the second half, we're having to go for it all the time, putting our defense in a bit short field. So, you know, it just snowballed as it went, but it's not last year. And uh, we got a lot of work to do, obviously. Got to get back to it. First round, left. Dave, the, uh, the trouble running the ball, was that – a combination of things, or was it up front? You just weren't getting push, or I mean, I have to watch the film to give you a detail. I mean, it looked like we were just getting knocked into the backfield a lot. You know, I said this all week. Their defensive line was our biggest concern, uh, particularly the defensive tackles, and we think those guys are really good players. And we just did not block them up front the way that we have to to run the football. And so, you know, it was a combination of things, and it's impossible for me to tell you exactly what they were, but. I watched the line of scrimmage all night, and it wasn't going our way. It was going their way. Third row. Noah Fletch on the Wolfpacker. It seemed like in the first drive, Grayson was able to get the ball out quick and yeah. move down the field. What kind of changed, I guess, from there? And yeah, and we were very efficient in the first drive, and that's what I thought we were going to do, was you know whether we scored or not, finish every drive with a kick, worst case, a punt, possess the football, keep our defense off the field. I mean, that was our game plan, right? And and it was working for a while. We were in the game. And then, you know, the pick six, and then all of a sudden things just started to kind of unravel, and we just never got back into it, you know. Every time we'd make a play, there'd be a penalty. I mean, it was, it was really frustrating um, and not what we expected. Second row middle. Adam Sparks, Knoxville, New Sentinel. Coach, you, you did have some success against Nico. You had two picks, pick six. Uh, how do you size up how you guys did against Nico, and, and how do you how do you defend him? Oh, he's a good player. I mean, I, I thought you know against their spread, we defended that very well. I mean, they hurt us on some screens, a uh, little shovel to the running back, on some plays like that. They got into bigger personnel, something they haven't done a lot on film. There was a lot of twelve personnel, two tight ends, one back tonight with their offense, and so you know credit them for changing up. Because, you know, if you watch them, most of their formations you're going to see are four wides or one tight end formations. And so, you know, I thought we did some good things that way, but we did not, you know, as the game went on, stop the run. And we were out there a lot in the second half, you know, defensively because of how we played on offense in the second half. Coach Steve Ruth from the Associated Press, that interception return was obviously a big one. Yeah, man, yeah, we're in the red zone. So, I mean, it flips. We're going to get three probably right there at least. Yeah, so that's a big swing on the scoreboard. Did you see what happened on the play? I mean, did it yeah, look uh, like the running back might have slowed down or stopped, or, or did you just overthrow him? No, I mean, we were, it was an RPO, and uh, Grayson kept the football, and the tight end was open, but he had a guy in his face, so he jumped over him and just overthrew the ball. You know, I mean, was, he was trying to make a play and just wasn't accurate on that one. Back in the room. Griffin Cunningham, Agromech. How do you feel the fans travel today? The what? 
fans? How'd they travel? Yeah, it looked good. I mean, there was a lot of red in the stadium, and uh, there was a lot of noise for us, you know. I mean, I was very, very happy with our fans. I'm appreciative, you know. I mean, they sold all our tickets out, and we obviously didn't deliver the game they wanted to watch, but uh, credit to them for showing up and supporting the football team. Back to the room, cameras. Coach Cam Gaskins, WBTV here in Charlotte. Uh, what do you say to Grayson after a performance? I'm sure he's pretty disappointed in. And how confident are you in his ability to flush this into? Oh yeah, uh, he's very competitive. Mad at himself right now. He, you know, get back, study it, flush it, and move on. And he'll be excited to play the next game. I have great confidence in Grayson. And uh, just you know, sometimes you have games like that as a quarterback and as a head coach. I completely believe in him. Take two more second row. Dave Westrucker, 24-7 Sports. The way, especially in the second half, it seemed like the entire game was played on that end yeah. of the field. How how difficult is it to kind of get anything going? No, that's impossible. <laughs> I mean, when you have a long field on offense and a short field on defense, I mean, against a team like that that scores like they do, I mean, you can't win. I mean, you have to play field position football and you have to have sustained drives and you have to get off the field on third and long. Like that's how you have a chance to win team against teams like that. And we did the opposite. You know, I mean, we gave our defense short fields to defend and our offense had long fields and our special teams weren't good enough. You know, I mean, it was a three phase loss. When you look at the game, all the stats, offense, defense, special teams, we lost that game as a as a team and it's a lot to improve. And I look forward to the opportunity to do it. Last question in front row. Yeah, Rob McLean with Inside Pack Sports. Uh, what message did you convey to your team when you got to the locker, and what are your expectations from them starting Monday? I told them the same thing I told you. I mean, it wasn't what I expected to see. You know, they won the line of scrimmage. We weren't physical enough. We turned the ball over too much. We didn't get it done. And it starts with me. You know, I'm the one that sits in there and, and uh, leads the staff and our game planning and all that. But this is a really – good bunch of guys and they will go back to work I know that and they'll stick together there'll be a lot of people telling them that they're no good and that's fine and, and inside the building we got to do a great job leading and our captains our leadership council all that so it's a lot of football in front of us